Up at the workshop this morning in this mid, uh, getting towards mid-January day where I'm now thinking I should be vaping my hives because they're broodless. So I'm getting organized and trying to cut some bases that are gonna close off my ventilated base Dadon hives. <laughs> We use the plastic Nico base here, which is brilliant, but I'm going to be closing it for two reasons. First reason is I'm going to be vaping with oxalic acid, vaporized oxalic acid, and I need to go into each apiary, close off the base as quickly, and then use that base I slide in as a monitoring trap. So not really a trap, but it basically just traps the mites that fall down so I can monitor overall what my mite drop is. Second reason is we're now into mid-January and I like to think that, I may be wrong in this, but I've got queens starting to think about brooding up within the next four to six weeks. And if we get any cold weather like last year at the end of February, March, it can have a significant effect on the colony's development. So what I like to do is close off the bases. So by, by closing them off, I can do two things. I can monitor my mite drop. I can monitor my mite drop after the treatment and I can also think that I'm uh, closing off the base so that any drafty air when the, the colony is starting to get a little bit stretched and a bit pushing the limits because they're trying to burn more, build up bees, burn more, more honey to produce brood, to keep that brood warm. I'm hoping that that is going to be able to kind of cushion it a bit to stop that cold wind blasting up through that ventilated base. Obviously there's a huge debate on, it constantly comes up in all the forums, a huge debate on what is the best thing to do for your ventilated bases versus not ventilated bases. I don't know, but I find that these ventilated bases made by Nika are brilliant purely on the fact that they don't rot. And once you've bought them, they last for years and all I like to do is close them off late winter, which is now, and hopefully give that queen a little bit more of a cushion if it does get cold because she's the one that's gonna to have to manage all that um, egg laying and everything. And if she starts to really feel the pinch in cold weather, that's when the problems arise. And I feel that it may help. Um, who knows? And I'm not gonna start an argument on it, but that's just how I feel. So I'll show you what I'm doing and what I've done to make the bases to actually shut off our, uh, our hives. This is our standard Nico base, it's for a Dadonts 10 frame hive. Okay, so our hive sits on here. This is one I've just taken off from underneath one of my hives. We, just to show you so you know, we have these little clips that go either side. They're standard in many beekeeping areas. These little clips go in, you have a screw that sits here on the, on the wooden base and then the screw, you, that metal then goes over the top of the screw and it clicks down and holds the base to the hive. And for the doors, you've got a normal door that sits in the front here. So it's a really good piece of kit. And as I was saying before, <coughs> excuse me, dusty, underneath we can close it off. This is what I do when I vape my hives. So I slide this in and therefore that vaporized oxalic acid is held in the hive, in the base, and then I can monitor what drops through here and have a look after four to six days to see how I'm, what my mite drop is and then come back and treat it again. And then if I want to remove these, I can pretty easily. If I want to leave them in, they just close in like that. At the end of the day, I make, we cut these out of, um, these are a byproduct of the supermarket industry. When they buy in large amounts of um, Coca-Cola and fizzy drinks and anything that's in a bottle like water, these are actually on the pallet. They're on the pallet and then they stack the bottles on top of that. You can see they're pretty flexible, but they're stiff. So they're actually a brilliant tool for us because we do many things with these. We heat our workshop with them in the winter. You can actually use them for mulching in your apiary. So you've seen I use tires and I use pallets, but underneath them, I put these sheets because basically they're free and we have an agreement with the with this local supermarket that we obviously pay a little bit towards them, but they're pretty much free. They break down biologically after about two years 
They're not like plastic sheets, they don't hang around. We feel it's good for the environment and we're doing a good thing by being sustainable uh, in, these, um, in, these, in these mulches. And they do mulch really well because as they absorb moisture, they, they get heavier and heavier and they drop down over the top of weeds and they mulch all around your hives. So all you have to do then is mow around these things and if you hit them with the mower it doesn't matter a damn the mower doesn't get damaged because um the overall you don't anyway but sometimes the corners might flick up or something but overall they're a really good product and of course because i'm in the workshop for a few hours this morning i'm melting down some frames and we end up with them like that and we'll go through them clean them up stretch any wires that need stretching by pulling out the loose wires and pinning them down with a drawing pin that tightens the wires up and uh, just getting them ready to re-wax them. All little jobs we do when we're here doing the same thing. It's just so easy to do it all at the same time. Look at that lovely wax. I'm actually gonna be investing in one of those molds that you can buy that I'm gonna make my own foundation with. I'm not gonna probably go down the road of buying a roller. Instead, I'm going to probably go for the single mould and maybe buy two or three single moulds and over the winter, in, as years come, I'll be able to make my own foundation. Because I just feel that buying foundation is great and the people that make it are professional and it's done and they buy from good sources because, you know, it, it's all good. But it's another cost. It's another huge cost to your apiary, uh, to, your, to your beekeeping work. That, I, mean, you, I spend probably €1,500 a year on foundation alone at the moment and that's with running just up to 200 hives so you imagine when i sell more nukes and when i sell more bees i'm going to be spending more probably more like two or three thousand so if i've got time over the winter because i'm not making new hives which i won't be every year it's actually better to do some of that time and make a wax room where i can work on wax and either make candles and save all my own cappings and not sell it and be uh, more sustainable by making my own foundation. It might take a long time, and the product you get from the wax molds in terms of foundation is, not, is quite brittle because it's not been pleated as it goes through the roller. But it's still good, providing you don't have to transport it and providing you put it in and you're careful with it, it's absolutely fine to use that foundation. And there's no difference at all after the bees have built it out. And they'll probably build it out better because you know where it's come from and you know that it's pure beeswax that you brought from your bees and you can trace the source. There's no issues at all. That's what I want to do. And that's, I think, a good way to go. So with all the morning prep uh, finished, I'm now at the apiary in the afternoon. I'm going to start vaping now. I've got, I think, 13 apiaries to do with varying amounts of hives in each one. This one has 18 hives in. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is get all the gear down there, go quickly through the gear, and then we're going to close off all the hives. So the very first thing I do is shut all the hives off. Because after you've done that, after you foam them off, there's nothing to worry about regarding bees. You don't need any protective clothing because the bees, the minute they vape, they become completely defenseless. They don't worry about defending their colony. They're just so lost and so worried about um, what else is happening in the colony that the the kind of the the vapor tends to sort of just dis dis distract them and, and change their manner for a while. So I get them all. Um, foamed off and then we can relax and just take our time getting the ox oxalic acid into the colony cleanly and properly. You can see that uh, this apiary, as I said before, when I filmed, uh, I think, supering in the sunshine in the spring, this apiary is actually an area, it's a fantastic area, but the track leading down is just passable in the winter, but as from there, I wouldn't risk driving on here. And the reason is, I've got a lot of work to do in other apiaries, and I can't risk getting stuck for an hour or two waiting for a tractor to pull me out. But just using a wheelbarrow, you see um, the soil here is really sticky and clayey, and the minute you go into that, the minute you go into that soil, your wheels spin, and I haven't got knobbly tires on my truck. So it's just not worth it, so it's a no-go. So I'm on site now, and because this is far too far to me to get a lead down, I could put two extension leads together, but actually I think the power rating is better when I use my 500 watt inverter, which I've got here, just linked up to my battery. You might have seen this last year when I did some videos in the winter last time. I've got a uh, 70 ampere hour battery there and a 500 watt inverter, and that will power my sublimox 
for a good 40 to 50 hives before I do anything. It's no problem at all. And I can do them individually. But the first thing I'm gonna do, as I said, is use this foam. We cut foam into strips on the bandsaw and use it up to block up all the front doors. Okay, so I'll lift out our mouse guards carefully. First thing I do is put the foam in and afterwards I go on to using these little trays that then slide in underneath the hives to block off the hives. Just to refresh you the setup I've got, I'm using a 70 ampere battery with this 500 watt inverter and it'll get me about 40 to 50 volts. I've never actually kept it going but I don't like to run my batteries down too hard. So everything's ready, I've got my oxalic acid ready, I've got my spoons, got my two caps and I'm actually obviously warming up the oxalic acid vaporizer, my sublimox. I'm warming it up with the cap on because it helps it warm up a lot and it is actually quite cold today. And today, to be honest, is about the limit of where I want to be vaping because I've just seen some clusters and uh, they're fairly well, well, they're not tight, but they're tight as I want them to be. It's become apparent that the thing with treating oxalic acid is better if the cluster's a little bit loose. Um, but that means that they don't, they break cluster better and they, oxalic acid is completely dispersed throughout the colony. Now I know they break cluster when it's colder, but personally I just feel that they break cluster easier when it's sort of between five and eight degrees. You might have one or two bees flying in, but, but I've got no bees flying here. I've just seen one come out when I put the foam in, but at least um, they're all in. And this is actually really the perfect weather, to be honest. So I'm here now, we're gonna get it all done. And then this April will be done and finished for the winter. There'll be nothing to do till March. The obvious thing to mention is do not do this without a mask on, a good mask. And you should be also wearing goggles. Personally, I stand upwind of where things are happening, but it's been proven that oxalic acid can um, can actually uh, transmit through the membrane of liquid that's on the surface of your eye. When you blink and you're constantly bathing your eye in that liquid, it's been proven that oxalic acid can penetrate and, and sublimate out onto the surface of your eyeball. So it's something to bear in mind, but I don't know. I'm, um, I'm pretty careful. I stay at wind, but I always wear a good mask. You cannot do but wear a good vaporizer mask. You have to have a class one, all noxious gases, because this stuff is nasty and it'll give you pneumonia i'll just show you the once how i vape my highs you see i've got the foam in here and obviously there's the cap inverted the oxalic acid is in the base of the white cap and as we invert it round, we push that underneath into the colony you go and give it a little tap but i can't do it now because i'm basically holding it and there you are, that's all in and done. And that's what I'm going to do with all of these. So I'll put on time lapse and you can have a little look at how I go down the whole line. It's done pretty well. Get my other glove back on there so I can show you. But as you can see, perfect sublimation. Tiny bit of gas escaping from the back, but that's nothing to really worry about. The job is done. I wanted to show you what a 2.5 mil sublimation looks like in terms of gas, it's quite a lot. So I'll just stand back and let you see the amount that comes out. When I flip this over, obviously the crystals are in the bottom of the cap. If we invert it and that then drops the crystals onto the hot plate inside here. You'll see it's a huge amount.
just to show you as well, the residue we get is non-existent. Look at that inside there, you can see, I don't know if you can see if I get the light about right, there's absolutely nothing in the bottom of that pan, which is what we want. So it's a good, uh, a good result, we've got a clean application, the wind is calm, the weather temperature is about right, and um, on to the next apiary. So while I'm here, we'll just have a very quick look inside. I've just literally just about 10 seconds ago vaped this one. So uh, off comes the polystyrene. There's my bees underneath now. Let's see what they're doing. So lift this up and you'll see there's the oxalic acid. Okay, well that's my partition there. These are on seven frames, but you can see all the bees are white. They're completely covered in it which is what you want. So that's done right around the whole hive. That's a good colony, that one. Nice size. Seven frames, one partition and a foundation. That's like one partition there and a foundation. That's how I overwinter my bees. You can see there's a good colony. They've all been sublimated really well. Look at those white bees up there. Look, can you see those through the... Uh, let's have a look here. Let's have a look. So they're all nice and white inside. That's what you want. Everything has had a good dousing with it. So that's how it all works. You've just got to be organised. You've got to get your things together. And you've got to get stuff done so that when you turn up on site, everything works fine. Anyway, wishing you all a good day and uh, hope your bees are good. Bye for now.